bring in Matt Hasselbeck, ESPN NFL analyst and contributor to Sunday NFL Countdown. He's on the panel with Randy Moss and Teddy Bruschi, Rex Ryan, Sam Ponder. Saturday and Sunday of Super Wild Card Weekend. You can watch them at 10 a.m. Eastern, both days on the Mothership. Good to see you again, Matt. Let me start with the poll question. Seton, give Matt the poll question today. What team was most disappointing this season? Your options were, uh, and there's a bunch of them. Come on. Most disappointing. Oh, it's obvious. Denver. For me, it's Denver. I mean, people were picking the Denver Broncos to win the Super Bowl. Um, but that was just, I think it shocked everybody. I'm curious who you would put ahead of Denver. I would say Green Bay because I think everybody thought the NFC was open for the taking. And, you know, you lost Devontae Adams, but you still had a good defense, good running attack, and you had some young receivers in there. Yeah, they lost Devontae Adams. I feel like we talked about that a lot. You know, last year, I think everyone just said that the Denver Broncos are a franchise quarterback away from being a Super Bowl contender. They go out and give Russell Wilson basically a quarter of a billion dollars. They go get a new uh, head coach who was, you know, Aaron Rodgers, BFF in Green Bay. And I think you expected that to be the, you know, they had everything else. And we also thought that was going to be the best division in football. And that division was, I mean, that was, that was a huge disappointment. So, no, I, 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 I mean, just one vote, but yeah. I'm, I'm giving it, giving it to the Denver Broncos. Is that job enticing to like Sean Payton, Denver? If you want to be married to Russell Wilson, it's enticing, you know. And so there are some coaches that have a vision for to how to get him back to be a player that is one of the better quarterbacks in the league, not one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. And so if you have that vision, then yeah, it's a great job. But if you're a guy like Pete Carroll, maybe be an example of, hey, that I don't want that. That's not what I want. What I want is just a legion of boom type defense, great special teams and a running game that can travel. And then every once in a while, we'll, we'll take our shots. Our quarterback will use his legs every once in a while not playground ball, but like, you know, honestly, the way Geno Smith played this year, Mm -hmm. Geno Smith played so well this year. He played like Russell Wilson had previously always played. And, uh, and that's the formula that Pete Carroll is looking for. He's not looking for, you know, a quarterback that can cook, so to speak. But if you're Seattle, you got the fifth pick in the draft. Are you, are you amazing? Are you signing up Geno Smith? And for how long? And do you use that fifth pick on a quarterback? I think you can do both things. I think Geno quarterback, Geno Smith has earned the right to be the quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, at a certain price for sure. But but I think he has earned the right. And it's really funny because had the Detroit Lions not knocked off the Green Bay Packers, I think a lot of the talk would have been like, oh, Geno couldn't have even got him into the playoffs. But since the Detroit Lions <laughs> knocked off the Green Bay Packers, now the Seahawks are in the playoffs. <laughs> I know firsthand Pete Carroll can do some damage once he gets in the tournament and Geno Smith, really, he played, I thought he played outstanding this year. I was really, really impressed with how he played. But so now the narrative is like, Oh, Geno Smith, he's breaking these records. He's got his teams in the playoffs. Like he could do damage. And I believe he can. Like I, I think Geno Smith, you know, the thrower has been great. The leader has been great. And the guy using his legs when necessary has really been underrated as well. So yeah, he's the guy. Now, if you want to develop a younger guy along the way, but like that could be Drew Locke and you could spend your money elsewhere, but no huge, huge credit to what the Seattle Seahawks have done this year um, based on how everyone was talking about them at the end of last year, or even the start of this year. Body language, Aaron Rodgers walking off the field last night told you what? Um, He's a human being that um, this is I'll say this. When you're the quarterback of a franchise, just the regular starting quarterback, franchise quarterback, the weight of the world is on you during the season. It's seven days a week. It's all of it. So now try try to become uh, Aaron Rodgers, like maybe the best quarterback that's ever played for that franchise, certainly one of them. And now the weight of what every move that he makes that gets scrutinized, you could see the weight of it, like a big exhale. This has been a hard season. And I would just say this in my NFL career, some years were easier than others. Like if I was healthy throughout the season, 
it was a lot of fun. Like I had it, I had a blast, but if I was dealing with like a broken thumb or broken ribs or a sprained jaw or like some random thing, it's like, it takes the joy out of football a little bit. It makes it feel like a job. It makes it feel like work instead of making it feel like fun. I'm playing a kid's game. And so I think there was a lot on Aaron Rodgers this year that way. And, and he probably, Quite honestly, I think that's probably the last time he'll play for the Green Bay Packers. That's what I wondered. That's why I was reading the body language, that he almost was taking it in. Somebody wanted to swap jerseys with him, and he says, no, I'm keeping this one. Well, if you're playing next season, I don't – if anything, I would want to shed that jersey that I just wore and we just lost and we didn't make the playoffs. Is that fair to read into it like that? <laughs> You know what? I think there's such finality at the at the end of any season when you don't know it. I mean, listen, I, I was on the stinking practice squad when I started out in Green Bay. And then I was the backup quarterback, but the starting holder, I mean, for field goals and extra points. And I remember it was a game, I think it was Christmas Eve, maybe, but like we're playing Tampa and it was my last game ever as a Packer as the holder on field goals. And I remember, you know, we'd shake hands with the team. We say a prayer with the other team. We walk off the field. And I remember just soaking it in because that atmosphere is so special there. Anyone that's ever been to Lambeau knows exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm walking off the field for the last time, a game that I literally was holding extra points and field goals for Ryan Longwell. And I mean, obviously, you know, and I was getting like a little bit choked up. I'm like, wow, this has been such a special experience. <laughs> If I get traded or if I'm on a different team next year, I want to remember this. And that was me, like three years in Green Bay. We're talking about Aaron Rodgers. He's probably looking up there like, hmm, I wonder where they're going to put my name. Are they going to fit it in between <laughs> Bart Starr and Ray Nitschke? Oh, well, Don Hudson's got a spot next to him. Oh, what about Reggie White? You know, like it's completely different. So, I mean, he's a human being and every talk show and every, you know, we're going to talk about it all off season. But um, these are real people and, and, and he's no different. We're talking to Matt Hasselbeck, ESPN NFL analyst, and in the postseason, NFL Countdown's the place to go with Randy Moss, Teddy Bruschi, Rex Ryan, and Sam Ponder. They'll be there on Saturday and Sunday of Wild Card Weekend, 10 a.m. Eastern on both days. Would you have had a problem if the Texans decided to take a knee on the two-point conversion? Heck yeah, I would have had a problem. Heck yeah. Um uh, but I, I also wouldn't have had a problem if they tried like a trick play and they acted like they were going for an extra point and then they <laughs> ran a trick play. They ran the fake field goal that they, you know, they have okay. in the playbook. They've been practicing it all season. It's week 18. It would be legendary. <laughs> like that's kind of what I actually was hoping for. Uh, not just some like random two point play, you know, a five yard tight end out route, but no, listen, I'll say this, like, you know, I know fans and people in the media and all this, you're already thinking about the draft, but when you're a football player, like you're competing and those guys in that locker room, every locker room that I was in, I don't care if you're playing rock, paper, scissors for your per diem money, like you care and you're competitive. That's why you are where you are in your career and you're in the career that you're in. So this idea of sort of like tanking or not trying your best, um, I don't know if they do that in other sports. It's certainly not something I've ever, ever even felt an inkling towards with coaches or players in, in the NFL. If you're the Cowboys, you're Mike McCarthy, Dak Prescott. What are you taking away from that loss in Washington going into Good Tampa? lesson, because they, they looked like the absolute worst team, worst playoff team um, yesterday. And this would be, this is, you know what it looked like to me? It looked like the third preseason game. That's what it looked like to me. And, and having sort of made this mistake myself in my career, sometimes in the preseason, the head coach, I remember Mike Holmgren would say, okay, starters, you're going to play, um, you're going to play a quarter and a half or something like that. Like we're not resting you, we're playing you, but you're not really all the way in. Just the goal is to get out of this game healthy, you know, and the mindset like for me anyway, I couldn't, I wasn't a very good player. If I was sort of like playing not to get hurt, I had to be all the way freaking in all the way in. I need to be like confident, throw and throw the ball with conviction, uh, play tough and gritty. And like basically, you know, how you would normally play football in the preseason. It's almost like, ah, uh, yeah, this is a little different. And you got one foot in one foot out. It's a terrible way to play. And you don't look like the kind of player that you are. And I thought the Dallas Cowboys in the run game, they stunk. Uh, they, they really stunk in a lot of areas. It was bad quarterback play for a quarterback. That's not a bad player. 
So I think there's a lesson there. Uh, will it affect them going forward in the next week? No, it's probably a lesson they learned for next year, maybe. But um, but they really look bad, and they're and they're not a bad team. What do you do if you're Sean McVay? I, th- I don't think he's going to coach next year. I really don't. And I've spent a little bit of time with Sean McVay, and I didn't know him before I did. And then the first time I met him, I'm like, wow, this guy is a genius. He's a grinder. Like, when does he sleep? Um, at some point, like, it's just too much. Like, you need a breather. Like, listen, I coached high school football this year, and every loss I took really hard. It's tough. I don't know if people understand the grind that coaching is. And then when you're sort of, a, I don't want to call him a micromanager, but he he could tell you what the nickel defender is supposed to do in every scenario. It's like almost like it's almost too much. And so, like, I could see him, he's 36 years old, I believe. I could see him taking a breather and then being the hottest name in, co- in the coaching search, coach searches from here on out. And he'll take a step back. Some coaches have taken a step back, taken a year off, Doug Peterson, Mike McCarthy, Tom Coughlin, a bunch of guys, and they've come back a better version of themselves. And, uh, you know, it'd be, it would stink for the Rams, it would stink for the NFL, but I could definitely see that happening with, uh, with Sean. More likely to be in TV next year. Not on TV, but Tom Brady or Sean McVay? No, neither. I, 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 don't, I think Tom Brady's going to play again. Um, and listen, that, that was sort of be my advice to him. Like, you know, I, I retired when I was 40 and uh, went into TV. I joined Sunday NFL Countdown. They, they offered me a job to sit with Chris Berman on that show. And I'm like, Chris Berman? Are you kidding me? Like, that was my favorite show growing up. That was my favorite show as an adult, you know? And then like, oh, you can sit next to Chris Berman. I'm like, okay, fine. I'm in. Um, but as cool as that was, there's nothing like playing quarterback in the NFL. There really isn't. And so um, if, if you can make it work for your family, like part of my thing was my kids were teenagers. I had kids entering high school and I'm trying to be a quarterback in the NFL. It's, it's a different dynamic, but as long as you can really get mastery of that situation and do both of those things well, I, I, would, I would keep playing. You think Sean McVay is just going to take a year off, not take a year off and go into TV? I think he would be awesome at TV. Like I know he would be great. I mean, again, like sit, when I sat down with him the first time, they were getting ready to play a game in Mexico City. And I sat down, we were supposed to watch a little bit of film for like five minutes, like two hours and five minutes later. I'm like, I, I feel like I should be paying you money. I'm learning so much. Can I write some of this down? It was so, it was so awesome. He would be amazing on TV, but I don't think that's what he needs. I think he needs to step back and take a breather and I don't know what, learn some stuff about how to maybe have a healthier balance, maybe delegate a little bit more, maybe not take the losses so hard. I mean, good people that I know well, that I have a ton of respect for. I mentioned the names, Tom Coughlin, Mike McCarthy, Doug Peterson have taken a year out of football and come back way better, way better. And I think they would tell you that and and healthier too. Um, and so Sean McVay, I think is one of the best coaches I've ever been around, um, in terms of like the potential to be great. And I think, I think that would probably, I don't think TV is what he needs. Um, even though we would love to have him. All right. Rapid fire here. I'll give you Bengals, chiefs or bills. Ah, man. Like those are like my three favorite teams. I, I love those teams. And I think I'm in love with those quarterbacks. Joe Burrow is the hottest quarterback in, in football right now. Like if you, I, I didn't know it. I'm doing this feature for Joe Burrow. It's, it's coming out soon. I think it's going to run this week or next week. It is so cool. The stuff I learned about Joe Burrow and his fundamentals, like this dude makes things that are uncool, look cool on the football field too. Um, but I say that in like, I'm the huge Patrick Mahomes fan. Josh Allen's probably my favorite quarterback to watch. Um, that, that those three guys, like we're living in just an amazing time where we get to see those guys play. If, if, like I've said this last year, if that AFC, if that game against the Bills and the Chiefs was the Super Bowl last year, I would have been fine. Like if you were like, you know what, we're just going to do that game again as the Super Bowl, I would have been like, thank you. This is the best Super Bowl I've ever watched. I'll give you the Eagles or the field. I like the Eagles. And I like a Jalen, a healthy Jalen Hurts. I've had that injury and it, he looked, he looked like yesterday, like I felt when I tried to play with that injury. Um, hopefully he gets healthy in time. That buys big. Are the Niners better with Brock Purdy? I think so. 
I think so. He's the real deal. He needs to be taken seriously. And uh, that's that's crazy to say. But um, like I said earlier, Pete Carroll has a formula and a vision of how he wants to run his team. Kyle Shanahan has the exact same thing. And Brock Birdie is fitting into that perfectly right now. I have said Matt's my favorite Hasselbeck, haven't I, Paul? Oh, for decades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great appearance, mm. man. Wait, you, uh, you, you. Seem, you seem a little uh, suspicious about that. No, I, you know, it's, it's high praise. You know, I was thinking about my wife, my younger brother, a lot of people <laughs> like Rich Eisen would tell you, and I know you're friends with Rich, Rich Eisen would tell you that my youngest brother, Nathaniel, who people don't know about because he doesn't work on television, um, he's his favorite. And and most people would usually say that, but, but people like friends of ours, like people who know us always say my wife. So it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it all depends, but I, I thank you for the compliment. I, I would I would have said your dad because I'm in more of that era, having yeah. actually seen your dad play football. But uh, I get that a lot. Like Adrian Wojnarowski, who covers NBA at ESPN. Like I don't know him well. The first time I met him at work, he was like, "Hey, I was a big fan of your dad's growing up." Or Jeffrey Lurie, <laughs> uh, who was the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles. The first time I met him down there, he was like, "I was a season ticket holder for the Patriots. I used to love your dad and Steve Grogan and Russ Francis." I'm like, you know, oh, that's. It's awesome. I appreciate it. Next time we'll have Matt's wife on, Fritzy. When you book them, we'll get Matt. <laughs> that's a good uh, She won't like that. She doesn't <laughs> like the camera, but uh, it's uh, all right. Have fun this weekend. Thank you again, Matt. Anytime. And Anytime. Uh, Matt Hasselbeck, NFL Countdown with Randy Moss, Teddy Bruschi, Rex Ryan, and Sam Ponder. Saturday and Sunday, Wild Card Weekend. They start at 10 a.m. Eastern, both days on the mothership. Take a break. We've got our play of the day. Your phone calls coming up right after this.